Hello and welcome to My Model Corner Project 16. In early 2001, I built a Helldiver looking close to factory new. Even though it has sat in a glass cabinet for years, it has a layer of dust on it. I don't remember much about the exact kit, but I believe based on the details and markings on our original model here, that it is an earlier release of the very kit we're about to build and paint. Only the external decals have changed. The objective of this latest build is towards more realism as opposed to our older SB2 and with a little bit of luck demonstrate improvements in my personal skills since that earlier time. So thank you Kendra and Ramon for this opportunity. We'll be trying out a new strategy for this particular aircraft. Let's hope we get a nice hell diver out of it and not a horror story. <laughs> We have our build manual, decal sheet, and photo etch. Our first paint will be enamel based to produce our bedrock coating. It is a metallic silver to mimic the bare aluminum metal of an airframe. We'll spray on different paints in three layers to establish a foundation prior to our final exterior color application. This initial groundwork will aid our weathering steps during the later stages of this project. For planning ahead, we note that the dive brake reinforcement frames that will be used in combination with the photo etch flaps are molded in a fixed neutral position. Let's go ahead and carefully remove these so that we have posable options later on in the construction. The next color we'll apply is the anti-corrosion paint layer. Miller Day show, ladies and gentlemen, officially launched by Benny Goodman and his orchestra playing Glenn Miller's unforgettable theme, Moonlight Serenade. And this is Martin Block on the stage of the New York Paramount Theater in Times Square, ready to bring you 30 minutes of entertainment. Now, Benny Goodman is here with his wonderful band, and the one and only Milton Burrell is here, along with Joe Besser, Marion Hutton, Hex Benneke, and Johnny Johnston. All of whom you'll hear in a little while. I know that you don't want to hold back. I know that you want to give your every last dollar if needed to end this war. Now, there's still quite a bit of play going on on stage here at the Paramount Theater. I'd also like to tell you that tonight, WNEW has canceled all of its commercial commitments in order to bring you the entire show from the stage of the Paramount Theater in New York. It's been a magnificent show. So far, and it's going to continue right on until the small hours of the morning, so don't go away. Just leave your dial set to WNEW New York, and you'll be entertained just as the 4,000 people are who are here right now who have purchased over $4 million worth of war bonds in order to see this show. Quite a bit of horseplay going on on stage. Now that we've gotten some of the preliminary painting completed, let's do some panel wash to bring out the detail and also simulate grimy fluid leaks. Additionally, we can age the leaks a bit by toning the wash down with a cotton swab. After that, we can create paint chipping by randomly scraping at the zinc chromate paint to reveal the aluminum. Japan is too busy right now to take note of what's happened to her once Axis cousin. Radio Tokyo is blaring with reports that four American task forces, including many transports, are steaming around Okinawa. There, however, is no confirmation. And exactly what's going on in the Okinawa area would be difficult to say at this time, for Admiral Chester Nimitz, in an unusual communication delayed beyond its usual hour, has, for the first time, omitted all mention of ground operations on Okinawa. The Nimitz announcement reports only scattered air actions against enemy shipping and bases stretching to the mainland and Korea. The Associated Press points out that such an extraordinary omission might mean that a special communication is in the offing, perhaps giving the high sign of the end of all enemy resistance on the island. Moving to the southern waters of the Pacific, showdown battles are reported being waged for the vital Cagayan Valley on northern Luzon. Let's complete some of the interior parts and add them in before joining the main fuselage halves together. Baby, I want to see my baby. 
he gets home on big speed day. I'm gonna kiss my baby. I really miss my baby. I'm gonna see my baby and live in love that good old way. And now, ladies and gentlemen, looking over in the wings, we happen to spot one of your favorite band leaders. So let's get together and invite a great band leader for a bow. Ladies and gentlemen, Sammy Kay. For the cockpit instrument panel, we'll start by creating some wear by scraping the paint away once again, and this will also highlight some of the detail. The decal of the gauges and dials comes as a single piece with a lot of carrier film. We can improve the appearance by painstakingly cutting out each instrument face and adding them individually. Oh, folks, here's a story about Minnie the Moocher. She was a red hot hue to She was the roughest, toughest friend, but Minnie had a heart big as a whale. Howdy, 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 howdy. Sing it, come on, everybody. She messed around with a bloke named Smokey. She loved him, though he was cokey. He took her down to Chinatown, and he showed her how to kick the gong around. There is a bit of a gap on the rear gunner's forward bulkhead. It will probably be hard to see once the frame and glass canopy are added, but let's fill it in. Next, we fasten all the flight control surfaces together. While all that cures, let's carry out activities on the other attachments while we wait on that. Well, this modern age we're living in has got me in a spin. I'm not too bright to start with, and here's a fix I'm in. For anything and everything, the stamps you've got to use. D's and G's are groceries, and I think the T's are shoes. You gotta be an FBI man to figure out all the clues. Well, that's the situation when you've got the duration blues. Now on top of everything, the taxes roll around. I went to see the income man, and what do you think I found? They'll multiply the profit, incorporate the loss. Deducting all the expenditures and anything else they come across. To satisfy the government, it's ten to one the little woman sue. Oh, brother, that's an unfortunate situation when you've got the duration blue. 
Now food will win the swore they say, well, that's okay with me. But when I go to the corner store now, what do you think I see? Spam, wham, devil ham, something new they call Zoom. You take it and you heat it up to the temperature of your room. You can make it, cake it, bake it, flake it, oh, honey, take it away, you choose. It's just another situation when you've got the duration blues. There's the arm in the draft board. Got me all mixed up too. If you want it, then you're in. If you ain't, then who are you? Returning to the die flap frames, we can use our pin vise to create holes for additional detail. If we follow along with the recommended exterior paint illustrations, we have the Bunker Hill version which is an all sea blue with a yellow ring around the cowling, but the more interesting is the tricolor pattern of the 244th. After much abuse, I decided to retire my Neo airbrush now and try out the Iwata Eclipse. It is almost three times as expensive as the Neo. However, I think this will be a great opportunity for me to evaluate and give you my personal comparison opinions as I switch over mid-build having been a fan of the Neo. Before we begin testing our new airbrush, let's mask the portions of the Helldiver to protect from paint overspray. I would say that the Eclipse lays the paint down nicely. The trigger is just a little stiffer than I'm used to on the Neo, and the paint begins flowing from the nozzle a little earlier on the pullback as well. To help in our weathering, we do some pre-shading highlights to obtain sun bleaching and paint erosion effects when the color coats are added on. Continuing on, we hit the underside of the main fuselage.
To check how the colors will look with the pre-shade highlights, we can test on the smaller flight control surfaces, making sure to apply an uneven paint layer to get those weathering effects we're shooting for. Much like we've detailed our cockpit, we can use files, sanding sticks, and sanding sponges to remove paint to create wear and chipping. We have the flexibility to erode the layers at different depths, through the main exterior blue coat to reveal the anti-corrosion layer, and further, if desired, to the aluminum. If we go a little too far, the gray plastic will show through, which we can attribute to bare metal that has begun to oxidize to a dull aluminum.
We're now ready to do the main construction, starting with the wings. I began paddle washing with the black pastel and water mixture, but decided to create a dirtier look with the Tamiya panel wash. Before applying the decals, let's put on a clear coat. The instructions have us place two bombs in the internal bay which will hide all our work, so I'm opting to put them on the wings. Continuing to take advantage of cutting the dive flaps earlier, we can affix them in an open position. Consider it a flight control ops check on the deck. Now for the antenna wiring. Not difficult, but it needs a little patience. Dab a small amount of super glue, attach the cable, and wait. After a few minutes, likewise attach the cable to the antenna mast. Similarly, we do the same for the vertical cable line. Let's install the propeller and see if the engine works. Let's put on our dull coat before we put on the glass. Okay, we're almost done here. Stay tuned after the final reveal for a chance to participate in a Project 17 guessing game. Now let's put this beast on the flight deck. Take care, and we'll see you later. Hello, you've stuck around. In this box is the model for Project 17. 
You can try and guess what the kit represents if you'd like to be mentioned in that video episode by your name or handle. The winner is the first to correctly identify it. This model could be a 35 scale armor piece, a 48 scale aircraft, or a 350 scale ship. Type in your speculations in the comments section below this video. You are allowed three guesses per comment entry. I will pin a comment at the top declaring when someone has won, but I will announce the actual victor during the next video. Your first clue, it is a World War II item that served with the United States. Your second clue, it is not a 35 scale armor piece. Good luck.